Welcome back to another Motobot video and you join me again at Superbike Factory, one of the biggest used motorcycle shops in the UK and today I'm here to find the best adventure bikes under 10 grand. At that price point in this category of bike there's absolutely loads of brilliant bikes to choose from so we'll take a look around the showroom, I'll pick three that I'll take out for a spin and then at the end I'll tell you my favourite. So come on let's go! Before we get started, a massive thanks to Superbike Factory for sponsoring the channel. They've got a huge amount of awesome adventure bikes in stock, and so I thoroughly recommend checking out the website which is linked to in the description. They'll even deliver nationwide, and some of their bikes are delivered for free. But onto the showroom floor, where they've got an entire room of adventure bikes, and we'll start with something close to home. So one of the questions that I get asked most when I'm out and about riding is what bike do I personally own? And nowadays, it's a Tiger 800 X and there are plenty of Tiger 800s under 10 grand on display here in the adventure bike room. You've got a nice smooth inline triple that's brilliant for on the motorway, a nice variety of specs, some more road focused and some more off-road, and also you can get plenty of equipment for your money. Now my own bike, it's got the works, cruise control, heated seats, heated grips, TFT dash, auxiliary power, an adjustable windscreen, full three-piece aluminium luggage, and the whole lot with just 900 miles on it came in at under 10 grand. Now the bikes they've got here today range from five grand to eight. So if you want to spend a fair bit less than 10 grand, then this is a great starting point. The other option would be the Tiger 1200, a much more powerful bike. The Tiger 8 only makes about 94 horsepower, I believe. This thing though, it feels much more like a comfortable speed triple. For distance touring and two up work and with luggage, it does make a lot more sense. There's a lot more power there. And it's also got that sort of weightiness that makes it really comfortable on long motorway rides but that weight does make it a bit of a handful at lower speeds and also if you did want to off-road it I think personally anyway I'd go for the 800. Still worth checking out though there are a couple here at around the 10 gram mark and just like the 800 you get a lot of standard equipment for your money. Another good shout if you were looking to keep the sort of expenditure as low as possible would be the V-Strom so the thousands up to the newer 1050. These start at five and a half gram we've got one for six here this one's nearly seven and then for eight you've got the latest generation with its bright paint and semi-retro looks. These might not be the most exciting or tricked out gadgety bikes that you'll find in this showroom, but they're a decent solid performer. And like I say, if you want to keep the cost down, these are also worth a look. Now, another bike that you absolutely have to consider in this category is the Africa Twin. And we've got a great selection here. So this is the previous gen 1000cc version, eight and a half grand with just 6,000 miles on it. So not a bad shout at all. But then we've also got the brand new new 1100 model. This one's got 2,700 miles on it. It is a little bit over budget at 10,600, but if you can stretch to it, it's a brilliant bike that I've covered plenty on the channel and I've really enjoyed it in pretty much any setting, be that on the road or off-road at the Adventure Center. But I think the most interesting prospect has to be this one. This is the 1000cc, previous gen, but it's the DCT model, so dual clutch transmission, which basically acts like an automatic gearbox. Plus it's got full three-piece luggage, and so for eight and a half grand with 10,000 miles on it, this would make a brilliant rugged looking tourer. So some great bikes to choose from already, but the first one that I test rode had to be the absolute benchmark in the category, the king of the dad bikes, the BMW R1200 GS. It's the best selling adventure bike in the UK by a massive margin. So what's so good about it? For me, this bike is all about the engine. Not only does it give it that silky smooth feeling, plenty of torque as well well but also it holds its weight super low and that affects the feel of the whole bike I mean even pushing it around the forecourt here before I rode it you know you can feel how easy it's going to be to get on with it might not quite have the peak power and top end of some of the other large capacity adventure bikes but I think the pros outweigh the cons the other thing is it's a super comfortable bike part of that will be the nice wide bars and the riding position the other thing is the telelever suspension it gives it a really cushy luxurious feel at the front end a big wide saddle that's nice and padded as well and then this 
this model also gets their dynamic ESA, which is their electronic suspension. So you can put that in the soft mode and it really does feel very smooth. So yes, it's accomplished, comfy and easy to get on with. But what if you want something a bit more shouty, exotic and red? Well, I present you with the Ducati Multistrada 1200, which pretty much fits that description perfectly. This is a much more lively and sporty affair on the road than the GS. It revs up more, it makes more peak power, and it really does fly if you hang on to the gears. You've got a regular upside down fork, so it feels more precise at the front end. You get a little more feedback. Part of that is also going to be the 17 inch cast wheel at the front as well. So much like any other sporty road bike. And you've got slightly higher spec brakes with this Brembo radial master cylinder. So a little bit more feel and power from the braking as well. So clearly if you're into sporty faster riding then this is one to look into but what I will say is it doesn't feel quite as versatile as the GS firstly the comfort levels it's not quite as cushy in the ride and also you get a bit more buzz through the saddle certainly in the upper half of the rev range as you'd expect with a v-twin but then also the fact that it's entirely road focused it doesn't sit particularly tall it doesn't get oversized wheels it doesn't get 50 50 tires it doesn't get crash bars and that sort of thing and so if you do want to do a bit of off-roading or some gravel riding which is a big part of the adventure bike appeal uh, then this one isn't really cut out for that hmm so maybe what i'm really after is somewhere in between the two. A big V-twin with lively road performance, and yet it's gotta be comfortable with a bit more road presence and a little more off-road bias in the chassis. Well, that brief sounds a lot like the KTM Super Adventure S, but is it really the perfect 10 grand adventure bike? Now, as soon as I got on this bike today, I noticed straight away that it feels like the firmest in terms of the ride and the saddle, and also it sits pretty tall. Plenty of presence, it has a lot of space in terms of stretching out in the riding position and also it's going to give you a bit more clearance and travel if you do want to do a little bit of off-roading at the same time it doesn't really sacrifice too much sportiness i mean the engine like pretty much any other ktm is super lively loads of fun and it easily matches the ducati in terms of grins but i think what struck me the most about this bike certainly versus the other two is that it feels thoroughly modern and up-to-date in terms of tech and features you've got a tft dash on this bike loads of riding modes and settings you've also got an integration with the ktm my ride app for things like nav and controlling your phone keyless ignition that includes the fuel filler and the steering lock you get the wp semi-active electronically adjustable suspension and even little things like self-canceling indicators so despite the price and the fact that it's a few years old it's really on a par with a lot of the bikes that i review that are brand new in 2022 but before i declare a winner i know you all like to hear the bikes so here they are back to back and i'd love it if you could let me know which you think sounds the best by leaving a comment down below <laughs> So with all that in mind, which one would I buy if it was my money? Well, with the GS, if I was taking my Mod 1 test again tomorrow with the U-turns and figures of eight, I'd take this bike hands down. The way it holds its weight super low just makes it so easy to get on with. But that said, at 10 grand overall, I'm not sure you're getting the most bike for your money. And so it'd probably be one of the other two. Now the Multistrada for me is a brilliant bike, lots of fun, but perhaps a little too road focused. And it doesn't really feel like an adventure bike. It's more of a a touring bike and so that leaves the ktm which i think is just at 10 grand amazing it packs loads of features it's super fun it's versatile it's comfortable and it even looks pretty good for a ktm as always though i'd love to know which one you'd pick down in the comments below so let me know and if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next one oh.